Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to end the video? This is another paid request, this time from Elliot. And if you're watching, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of reviews or reactions, commentaries, comparisons, topics, talking about news articles, which is whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, Elliot wanted me to look at Firefly episodes 1 and 2. Now, Firefly was a show I had heard of. It came out in 2002 on Fox. It was made by Joss Whedon, which I know he's persona non grata today. Everywhere you looked, everyone was saying how much of an asshole he was, whether on people on Buffy the Vampire Slayer after all these years saying, yeah, Joss Whedon was a dickhead. And like, where were you 10 years ago? Where were you when uh, he was doing the Avengers? But, I don't know. I guess they don't... Whatever. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying, you know, why now are you talking? But, whatever. With that said, I didn't watch the show. I didn't even have Fox when it came out. Um, if I watched something like The X-Files... Well, actually, no. Now that I think about it, if it was 2002, maybe we, no. We would have had it. We would have had it back then, as a, a family. I guess I probably didn't know because I think that's the year I graduated from high school. Actually, yeah, that was the year I graduated from high school. So I was just busy with other shit. But uh, it just. But at the same time, it didn't last that long. I mean, there were 14 episodes and only 11 was aired. And then even with that, Fox aired it out of order. I mean, for I understand, the first episode I'm going to review, they aired last. <laughs> Disney thought, this is as exciting of a, of a way to begin the story. So, again, let me get this straight. Your first episode technically became your series finale. And then the second episode became the first one? No wonder people got confused if the fucking pilot, which is a two-parter, became your series finale. What the fuck? Like, wait a minute, we've met these characters, and now we're seeing them for the first time? Like, Summer Glau is like, wait a minute, we've seen her before, what the fuck? No wonder people got confused, but when it came on DVD and... People could see it in order, and all the episodes. Uh, it sold very well the DVD. I remember hearing about that, and then that's how they made that movie Serenity, which I think came and went. I would say these two episodes I liked. It's a space western, more so western than space, but decent bit of space in there. I would say I like these two episodes, the first two, because I liked the cast. I think the cast really made it work. Yeah, Nathan Fillion, who I do think is a very underrated guy. They should have gotten the play in that Uncharted movie. He's too old. I don't give a fuck. Fine. I think people... W I do think people will be okay with, oh, yeah, he's a bit old. Fine. You don't need the origins of Nathan Drake. Again, I'm not... I've only played this one game, so I'm not even like, oh, I know every single thing about it, but I know there's a fan film, and pe like people wanted him for Green Lantern, that, and then he got to be the voice actor in a lot of Green Lantern material, like DC anime films. People wanted him for Nathan Drake, and he did, there was this fan film. Sally didn't have the budget to show a lot of action scenes or stuff, Sally, so that's... But you see a bit of that charm, and I'm like, yeah, he could have worked. He was in Slither, which is a pretty damn decent creature feature film. He had a bit role in even the, that new Suicide Squad movie. I know he's done mainly TV work. He was on this show called Castle, which I didn't watch, but uh, I've heard good things about it. And that was on, what, 10 years or so? He's on this other one, The Rookie, I believe. I think that's going. I think he's just again doing TV work. Cause he didn't do a lot of like big time movies. Like the the movie I keep thinking of is White Noise Two: The Light, 
Which, you know what? I actually remember liking. It was way better than the first White Noise with Michael Keaton. I actually remember White Noise 2 The Light being a decent, for direct-to-video sequel, a decent film. But I like Nathan Fillion, and it's just sad that he didn't get the, I think, the work he, he should have gotten. I like to see him a lot fucking more than Mark Wahlberg. But anyway. But he plays Malcolm. You have Gina Torres as his second command. You got Alan Tudyk, who I remember from Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. He's been a lot of his stuff too. He plays the pilot of the ship called Serenity. He's uh, Gina Torres' husband. You have Adam Baldwin, who's a mercenary. Uh, later on, you got Ron Glass joining. He's a, well, they say a shepherd, but he's a preacher. Ron Glass, he was on the TV show Barney Miller. I remember Ron Glass. He was in this low budget 80s film with Charles Napier called Deep Space. I forgot, I forgot the director's name of that movie. It was like one of the only movies worth the shit that he did. It's the same guy that did like the Alien Dead and all that crap. <clears throat> but Deep Space, again, it's low budget, but I had fun because, number one, it has a creature that looks like a xenomorph, but if it had a bunch of punk rock, like horns on it. And second... You have a fight where your hero cuts the fucking alien's head off with a chainsaw. I'm like, okay, you know, this is not the the best, you know, this is not Alien or Aliens, but you know what, that's a win in my book. <laughs> you know, sometimes I am easy to please. But yeah, the there's other people in the cast. Uh, Summer Glau comes in. Really, the the second part of episode one she is this person who is this doctor's sister and she's a child prodigy and she was experimented on so as she has these fits and she's out of it but for I understand like later on she's very good at fighting and doing anything that you want her to do but she just her circuit's all screwed up in her brain, so to speak. I said, what makes this work is because of the cast and the bits of humor showcased in the cast. Also, one thing I do like is anytime they have a shot in space, there's no sound. They're just using the music. Very heavily western type of music for a space western motif. But I like that because, again, it's in space. You would not hear noises in space. But, you know, there's many films I like that break that rule. But it was refreshing that this didn't do that. This didn't, like, anytime it's in space, it's silent. And then you just see the ships move and you have the music letting you enjoy the sequence. I, I thought that was a very nice touch. It was a refreshing touch. But episode one, which is a two-parter, you have this war called the Unification War, and you have the Alliance and the Independence. And Nathan Fillion and Gina Torres, they're fighting against the Alliance. They're on the Independence, known as the Brown Coat side. Pretty much another like civil war. So back today, you have the Red Coats. Here, you have the Brown Coats. And they're trying to hold their own. They're able to get to a cannon, shoot a ship down. Uh, Nathan's trying to give a pep talk to this guy. No, we're not going to die. Look how pretty we are. Okay, we're just too pretty for God to let us die, you know? But their command, whatever you, their government, however you want to put it, fuck them over. The med ships are not coming. You're told to pretty much surrender and then it cuts to six years later I thought that was a bit confusing because they're told to surrender and it's a nice shot of Nathan Fillion looking at you know their other folks getting decimated but did they immediately find a ship and escape capture 
did they surrender and then they were let go a month, two years? Like, they were let go as sort of a... Like, there's a lot of, like, info missing on that. But six years later, they now do odd jobs, stealing cargo, or delivering goods, or salvaging, or illegal style salvaging drifting ships like in a lion ship. As I said, I like the the no sound in space type of deal. One leads leads to another they did pretty much seen by an alliance spaceship. They able to trip their way, they get the hell out of there, they find the goods, they deliver to the guy, this guy named uh, March Shepherd is the actor's name. And the guy goes, nope, I'm not doing it because guess what? They found that a type of ship like yours is around here. I don't want the heat. Goodbye. And like I said, as I'm watching this, the way the actors interact with each other, the way this crew interacts with each other, I and mean, Nathan Fillion, he is a captain who is capable, but at the same time he's got a good sense of humor. He feels less like an idiot compared to like Chris Pratt. I kind of wish Chris Pratt was more like this. I like the Guardians of the Galaxy films, but I would say I like Nathan Fillion more. Because, yeah, he has a sense of humor, but he definitely seems much more of a capable captain and leader. I just enjoy that aspect more. And, and also, at the same time, he's willing to, at one point, because they don't have time, shoots a guy right in the head. Boom. Time to drop him off. We don't have time for it. He's very, very loyal to his crew. Because this, if you see this in proper order, you know, for example, why he's not really a religious guy anymore. Because at the very beginning, he's very religious. But now he's not because of what happened. I think there's a deleted scene where... Which maybe now that I think about this would have explained things a bit better. I think there's a deleted scene I remember reading that met some ships actually do ultimately arrive and get them out of there, which would it's would better explain what I was talking about before. Did they actually surrender? Were they rescued somehow? Did they find another ship and steal it? Some ships come. But I actually I don't know if it, see just I couldn't find the scene. I don't know if it was their ship or the the other people's ship. But anyway, the Gina Tori says, oh, thank God. And then Nathan Fillion's like, God. Yeah, which side is he on? Because their side didn't win. I mean, based on this, there's not a whole lot of detail about what the unification, like, what he was fighting for compared to Alliance, like th that stuff's a bit murky. But is it the way everyone interacts with each other? Like I said, the the way Gina Torres and Alan Tudor interact, and Tudor's like, hey, come on, you know, we gotta have some time off, you know. Why do you have to ask the captain? Why don't you just tell him let's have some time off? You tell that she's very loyal to the captain because their time in the military. Alan Tudor gets a bit pissed off about that. Just like, man. Seems like you listen to him more than me. Uh, Adam Baldwin, he's a mercenary. Sometimes there's I, areas like you don't know if you can trust him 100%, but he has a bit more of a merciless mentality. Well, actually, no, that's the wrong word I'm thinking of. He's a merc. Yeah, yeah. What's the word? What's the better word to describe him? He has a bit more tenacity for his mouth running faster than his brain and a bit more ready for a fight. Like there's a bit that they're going to interrogate someone. And Nathan Fillion reminds him, now listen, you just gotta steer him. And Adam Bowen goes, well pain is scary. <laughs> pain is scary, I could give him that. Definitely more of the, the hothead type of character. 
Uh, there's also this quirky engineer lady that reminds me of the... What was her name in Buffy? The... God. I forget her name. She was in American Pie. She went to band camp. Allison Hannigan? I forget the actress's name, but... Willow? Was that her character name on Buffy? God, it's... It's been... It's literally been like 20 years since I've seen that TV show. Dawn Willow. Fuck. Anyway, the girl in Buffy the Vampire TV show who was also went to band camp and American Pie. The engineer reminds me of her. The way she acted and kind of like, hey, how's it going? Like, you know, this kind of. Hey, how you doing? That kind of feeling, it felt like he, almost as if he just want Joss Whedon wanted that character put into this as the engineer, but couldn't get the actress. Or decide not to, I don't know. You also have this lady who uh, is known as a companion and seems like a bit of legitimacy and power or, or money, but at the same time, as uh, Nathan Fillion says, pretty much just keeps calling a whore. You know, Escort service, maybe is more appropriate, but that's what she's from. Escort, and she rents out shuttles to have her, you know, which, uh, with the way she looks, I would uh, pay for it. Here you go, let's, let's do it. And like I said, to repeat for the tenth time, the way the characters interact with each other and the bits of humor, but if they feel natural and not forced for the most part, uh, that's what I think made a lot of people like the show, and I can understand that. Like they're trying to find a way, another place to unload these goods. Is like, well, what about this planet? Well, this planet has patience, the, a character. So, well, she shot you. Well, you know, it's been a long time, and, you know, it was understandable. And then, it just brought up again. Another character says that. Like, didn't she shoot you one time? And Nathan feels like, everyone's making a fuss. <laughs> Pretty much throughout the two parts, you know, that stuff I mentioned happened. That if I don't wear they also take other passengers for their little extra money. So they take this guy, this doctor, and this uh, preacher, Ron Glass. They get in, they find out they've been fucked over. Nathan Fillion thinks it's the doctor, but it's actually the this other guy who's a, an alliance agent. But they don't want Nathan Fillion in his crew, they want the doctor. And Nathan Fillion goes, oh, the doc? Sure, sure, that's fine. Actually, is there a reward? <laughs> I thought Nathan Fillion knows how to play that smooth, natural... As if, okay, yeah, it's something that just would roll out of this character's ton. I keep using the word natural, I'm overusing it, but I think that is an asset that Nathan Fillion brings to a role like this. So, I guess spoilers for the two parter episode. Spoiler, heavy spoilers. The agent freaks out, the engineer lady gets shot. The the doctor says, listen, we're heading to this alliance ship. We, I can't be caught. My cargo can't be caught. You want me to save it, her? Nathan feels pissed about, but agrees. Surgeon saves the lady. We find out that the cargo is a woman, Summer Glau, which I know I have a friend, uh, Aldi, okay, Afri, who I remember there's a point that Summer Glau was like the number one choice for him because the the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Uh, that was a Terminator show. But man, that lady just disappeared. Like after what Knights of Badass him and a few other movies. I don't know what she's doing now, but she just fucking disappeared and I think my friend Afri like Summer Glau kinda went, Ew bit low on the tone pole of, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Afri, I just I just see Summer Glau, I just think of my friend Afri. And uh shows how many 
sometimes it happens with actors. Some people just disappear, or they just don't get the work, or they get bad work, and they just... Uh, maybe she retired, I don't know. But just, you know, sometimes it's just how it works with people. And that Sometimes people do just get 15 minutes of fame and then bygones be bygones. So they're trying to figure what to do. Who's this lady? It's a child prodigy. It's the doctor's sister. They experimented on her. The Alliance really wants this girl, really, really wants her, and then they're trying to figure out what to do. Should we kill the agent? What should we do? I like Alan Tudor going, oh, wait, wait a minute, shouldn't we, uh, I don't know, have a vote on this whole murdering people thing? And that's also one of the reasons why a show like Buffy the Vampire Slayer back in the day worked well, because... Joss Whedon did know how to write characters fairly well. I know Zalen Resurrection, but even Joss Whedon would tell you, it seems like my strip, but like everything they did was wrong and off. <laughs> and I just see it, because I just see the potential of like Ron Perlman's character. Like if you had the crew of Firefly and Nathan Fillion, like the way he's written in this was the Ron Perl character, Perlman. Ron Perlman character in Alien Resurrection. But I imagine Alien Resurrection, and you take this cast and you put it in that movie, and Nathan Fillion, the way his character is written on the show is how they make the Ron Perlman character that spot in Alien Resurrection. It would have made for a better movie. I'm not saying it would save the movie, but it would have made for a better Alien Resurrection flick. I mean, there's even, uh, there's other stuff to have, but I don't want to give every single thing away. <clears throat> and it, uh, it does have a bit of a Western feel to it. I mean, even the end of this two-parter, when they tried to unload the goods, they're in the desert on this planet, the horses around, even Nathan Fillion's gun kind of looks like a six-shooter type. I guess it depends how you feel about the whole Western motif. Some people just not into it. Me, I'm into it more than I was back to the day. And like everything, there's it just depends on how it's done. Like I remember enjoying the Adventures of Bristol County Jr. with Bruce Campbell, which is another show that only lasted one season. So it just it, it depends. You know, I like that one. I like this. It's not my favorite genre. I'm definitely to say I'm more into sci-fi. I'm definitely more into space than westerns, but you know, it works for what it needs to do here. I wouldn't say the action is memorable. I'll give it that on a negative note, maybe because the budgets and TV, the constraints of TV, but it's not like the shootouts are really that much. I mean, I don't know why I'm. I'm not expecting John Wick, but. It's, it's a TV show in 2002. It's not going to have... If this was done nowadays, I think it would. Because they seem a bit more particular on doing that for shows. Back then, wasn't really the case. Again, the budgets, the constraints of time, they just didn't have... Unless you said, like, martial law with Sam Mohan, that action's actually pretty... But that's, you know, martial artists with fight scenes, pretty decent. But it's not going to have, you know, big, big state-of-the-art action set pieces. So, you got to go into knowing that. And like I said, spoilers, heavy spoilers. You know, although I think I just spoiled this before, but... You know, the agent tries to taste Summer Glau and then has the doctor and Nathan feels like, we don't have fucking time for this shit, shoots him. Shoots the agent, dumps his ass, and they're gone. And says, hey, you know, how about your sister, you guys stay here. Just guess what, we need a doctor, we need a surgeon on here, just in case. 
And that seems like be the thrust of the show is that they'll always be on. You'll going to learn more about Summer Dwell, what's going on, and there's a bigger story with the Alliance and blah blah blah. But yeah, it only lasted 14 episodes and 11 was aired. And it said 14, I'm sure there would have been more, because usually is not like 20, 21, 22 episodes a season? So if I only got the 14 and then 11 aired, it shows, I mean, Fox is not, wasn't the best channel for a show to be on. I mean, better than maybe UPN or WB. I would say it's above WB and then UPN was well below, below that because very rarely does a show on UPN last that long with very very few exceptions and people be like what the fuck is a UPN yeah exactly exactly it's not it merged it's not really its own thing anymore <laughs> I didn't go off tangent Now, episode two, I liked it a little bit less, but I didn't mind it. And that's why it was just weird. Like, really? You think... I think the pilot episode was the better episode, this two-part. That sh this should have aired first. This was, to me, the better episode. But they went with... Like, one thing not... Another thing I liked about the two-part pilot is there's a great suspenseful scene where they mention these figures called Reavers, and the ship passing by, and it's just them the silence going by and then them kind of watching and are they going to be f are they coming at them are they not coming at them like that was a decent piece of suspense <clears throat> and we haven't seen the reavers but we hear talk amongst the crew of how bad they are but episode two they wanted it's a bit more of action so they went with that it starts with Nathan Fillion, Gina Torres, Adam Bowen at a bar. Uh, Tom Tolles, the guy who's with Michael Rooker and Henry Porter, a serial killer. And he's been a lot of other stuff. He starts talking shit about the side that lost, the independence, the side that Nathan Fillion was on. Nathan doesn't like that, so he decides to have a fight. <clears throat> I do like the piece where, <clears throat> when you say it to my face, so Tom Tolles does it. What you don't do about it? And Nathan Fillion goes, well, nothing. I just want you to face me so that she got behind you. What? And then she <laughs> smacks him in the face. Yeah, a bit of a bar fight. You don't get to see a lot of it, though, Sally. Would have been nice to see a bit of choreography, but again, even with a TV show, I think you could have done a bit more. Because probably you don't see most of it, and then they go outside, and there's a few little bits here. So I wish we would have seen more of the, the fight. That was a, I thought, uh, disappointment. And then Summer Glau, she's having nightmares, and her brother's trying to calm her down. One of these, one of these, you know, they get to a space station, they get a job from this uh, crime lord, and his second command is Andrew Bernarsti, as his character named Crow. Andrew Bernarsti, who is Leatherface and Chainsaw Master 2003, and the prequel, the beginning. He's it was also Zane Deef, Zane Deef in the John Dwight Van Dam Street Fighter movie. He was also one of the candy bar villains in Hudson Hawk. Was he Butterfingers? I can't remember which he was. There was like Snickers, Almond Joy, Butterfingers. I forget what who else. Sally no Skittles. But Andrew Bern by the way, Andrew Bernardi is a fucking dickhead. He's a fucking asshole. This is a guy that, you know, when Gunnar Hansen people pass away, oh yeah, I was so much better than Gunnar Hansen and like talk shit about even oh Gunnar Hansen, whatever, fuck him. And I'm like, the guy's dead, dude. Oh, I don't care. He's a steroid abusing pimple head. Just I'm the best little face ever! That's how he is. Hey, I bet you've been nice to you, and I'm the best little face ever. He did these things where it was a cameo. At one point, he, like, someone showed me this. Might have been the guy's a dead pit, actually. I think it was. And, uh, I think they watched a video 
and he gave his, the, the fucking idiot gave his phone number. He said, well, hey, don't give this to anybody, but you given your phone number on a cameo that everyone's going to be able to see, dipshit. Took too many steroids. Steroids make you deaf? Do you mind right now? Fucking pimple head. Fucking moron. Sorry, when I saw Andrew Bernard's, I'm like, oh, that fucking moron. Steroids definitely went to his fucking head. And he's like, talks, if you see him. He talks like this, and hey, here's Andrew Bernard's here. By the way, the job is to get these traits from a train. They're not told what in it, but they get the... And then they find out after the fact it's better call. And then they're like, oh shit. Because the crew gets the traits while they stay behind as, as a cover. And they hear some other people talking that it's better call. And you go, oh shit. And the sheriff is actually Greg Henry. Which is cool because later on those two were worked together on Slither. So it, it was kind of cool to see that they worked on something before Slither. Nathan Fillion and Greg Henry. Because Greg Henry was the, the asshole. He was a fun character but the, the asshole mayor. And uh, Slither. And it, he's a good actor. Good character actor. So, oh shit this Greg Henry and Nathan Fillion, wow, they, again, it was cool they worked together before here, and then later on would work together on Slither. Uh, yeah, that was fun. It was fun to see him in there. And he's not an evil sheriff, he's actually a good sheriff. So one, I mean, the spoilers now, spoilers for that episode, they decide to, after some things happen, it's medicine, we're going to take it back. The Crime Lords buddies put Andrew Bernarstes, like, yeah, I'll take you that back. Yeah. They did a bit of a fight. Again, there's not much to the fight. Like I said, the action, the fight scenes, I, I'm being harsh on them. I shouldn't be, because that's the way TV was back in the day. I'm just saying, if you watch it now, they seem a bit more. Is left to be desired type of stuff. But again, the characters make it work. Whether it be like Adam Bowen being a adamant that they should leave, is like, no, no, we can't leave our captain. And Alan is like, well, yeah, and I'm also not going to leave my wife. She's there, down there. And my favorite part, and this is super spoiler, I, I did not see this coming, but I did laugh out loud. I know I should have said LOL, but I decided to actually spell it out this time. Laugh out loud. They defeat the bad guys, capture, and Nathan Philly is telling Andrew Bernard's, do you listen? Here's the money. You give it back. You tell them. We don't want no trouble. We didn't spend any of this money. And Andrew Bernard's is like, yeah. It doesn't matter. You keep your money. Cause I'm gonna hunt you down. I'm gonna find you. And no matter what, you know. Last thing you don't see is my blade. And then he feels like, well, damn. He hits the guy, and the guy falls back and gets killed into this like motor, like a motor propeller engine, like this engine. I didn't see that coming. And then the next guy comes in, and Nathan Fillion starts giving the same speech. And the guy's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And the others, they, they're in the same boat. <laughs> We're all in agreement. Yeah, I speak for everyone. Like, that's what I mean by the, the humor worked well. Like, moments like that, i like, okay, this is why the show got a bit of a cult following, is moments like that. Um... So that was uh, the effects of right, the ships. I mean, it's 2002. It's a TV budget, so I guess I'm being a bit lenient on it. You know, it's that good. Of, I mean, what else do you say? It's 2002. I, I do think 
maybe they should have used a bit more like practical model work. I'm gonna say it's not used at all, but I I'm just mo I'm trying to think of now the ships. Uh, I'll be honest, I can't remember now. Uh, I'm sorry, I, that's, I fucked up on it, but... It seemed like there's a bit of CG usage, but it wasn't really big on, but... There might have been some model work. I can't remember. Just to be honest, those are not the scenes that really... Are gonna make the viewer... Oh, I love the show because of these scenes. It's because, again, you know, of the characters, the way they interact with each other, the way the humor meshes in with the story. And episode two was still decent. Again, I do think episode, the pilot was better. And again, dumbfounded, well, but Fox fucked that up a lot. And there's a lot of shows they fucked up. I mean, I have a show that's just over there. Grade the Bunny. If you don't know, it was a show where it was in a world where puppets and humans work together and they're doing this Muppets not quite but, but this type of Mr. Rogers like family friendly show but then afterward you know they're one's an alcoholic one's doing this kinda like what you would see much before Meet the Feebles which is a really fun Peter Jackson film but you know, not as violent and, and cursing, because there's a little bit of cursing, but not as violent because it's still for TV. But that was a show that they, Fox wouldn't leave them alone, and they kept wanting to change stuff, and then, maybe that was aired out of order too, I can't remember. Or like some would air, that's another show they fucked with, but Seth Green starred in it, Sarah Silverman. <laughs> Eugene Levy, I like the puppets. Oh, it was kind of a fun, quirky show. It felt different, but that only lasted a year. I said they had a lot of shows that lasted all a year because Fox didn't know what the fuck they were doing a lot of times. Um, it's a surprise that X Files stayed on for so long. Some would say too long, but. I'm super, like, I think X-Files had the benefit of when it came out, it didn't have a lot of big hype, so Fox left it alone and didn't fuck with it. And then as people watched it, they like, what the hell is this? Like, you know, word of mouth. And they started talking, like, what the hell is this? And then, because it was so unique at the time, they are like, oh, shit. And then... Especially when it moved to Fox moved to Sunday, it got a lot bigger re ratings. Became one of their biggest hits, along with the the Simpsons. X Files was a huge hit, and then Chris Carr fucked it up by that shitty revival. Two season ten eleven, one sets my left ball, one sets my right ball, and they use teeth, so they don't even do god damn good job of sucking. Sorry, when I think of X Files, I love. I didn't even watch seasons 8 and 9, I, uh, despite their flaws, but the revival, anyway, fuck that shit, but this was good, it was good, sorry, uh, sorry it was a bit lengthy, but, uh, of a video, but, uh, I, I went all over the place, but with that said, Elliot, thank you so much, you guys take care, we'll see you guys later, bye-bye.